Okay, now we're on the front pump assembly. Uh, what I'm going to do is just give it a good clean up first. Uh, we're going to mark these like we did with the rear pump. Just scribe a couple of little X marks just so we know we don't have to worry about thinking which way it went. And we'll just take those gears out. Just have a bit of a look at them. Um, they're a bit scorn as well so we'll polish those up and put a couple of lubricating grooves in there as well um, going to also change the front pump bush and the front pump seal so oh, and, and the the drain plug here we'll put a neodymium magnet in there as well few high bits there if you can see that extra shiny bit there and around here so it's good to just um, just flatten it out with a stone like this make sure you keep it nice and flat and also make sure you scrape the gaskets uh, really well around those guide pins there you go they have got a fairly uh, coarse um, filter screen in there. There I've tapped out the front pump seal. Doesn't look too bad. It's a nice sharp edge on it. And it's nice and flexible so probably wasn't too bad. But we need to knock that uh, bush out. You can see it's been munched up there for some reason. Probably when whoever was putting the torque converter in it hit that little little lip and just knocked a bit of that bush off. And we're just going to knock that bush out. There we go. There we go. Just be careful to not take that sharp edge off as well when you're, when you're doing this. I use this one so I can get in under here and I've got another stone that, that's got like a nice flat bit that I can do around in here. going to do the flat bits with this one. So it's just nice and flat. Now again you can see the high marks were around the outside there. You want the pump nice and flat so you don't lose any pressure that's uh, coming out of the pump. Especially when this in here is a little bit worn. Now we've got the, the new seal, new bush we've got to put in, um, and your new O-rings. Now the extension housing O-ring and the front pump O-ring should be the same. But what I like to do is always, because the pump's a lot harder to get to, uh, the extension housing you can replace while it's in the vehicle. You've got to pull the transmission out. I always like to just measure up and just see which seal is has a better section. That one's 134 thou. That one's about 135 thou. So we'll just take it another 134. 135 and a half. So I'm going to use this seal in the pump and this one in the on the extension housing. Okay, I'm going to put the bush in now and remember just to have it, um, I'm just going to have it level with this converter side of the of the 
pump. So we want that push to be sitting uh, as close as we can to the torque converter. Another thing, you've got this little uh, drain drain um, groove. Just make sure you don't put uh, where the join of the um, the bush is on there. Just put it in a different part of it. You know, we'll just go ahead and put that in. Make sure it's nice and flat. And there's a nice resistance there on the bush, so we know it's not going to slip out. And that, that bush has actually got a chamfer on it as well, so um, you can even just go to the bottom of the chamfer on the bush level with the top of that um, housing. If you want it to be maximum as close as it can go to the torque converter. And we've got the seal. You just make sure that the spring's in there. There'll be a little, you can see that. Make sure the spring's in there. And I like to just go around like this, just to make sure that spring is seated in nicely. Sometimes if you, when you're pushing it in, and that spring can actually pop out of the seal and then it's a very awkward job to either pop it back in from the inside or you'll if you don't have another seal so we're just going to put that on there this nice flat bit of metal we have just going to just try and tap it around e as evenly as we can and avoid hitting your fingers too And there is a slightly different sound uh, when you know when you get to the end. So we're just going to just double check, make sure that spring hasn't popped out and it all looks good. So that all these little nooks and crannies uh, are blown out just to make sure there's no little bits of gasket or anything in there. Okay, now, I don't know if you can see that, but there are some high marks on the pump gear there, and here, and over here, so possibly this transmission ran dry for a period of time. I'm just going to go at 45 degrees. Try and keep it as flat as I can, and it is a fairly coarse stone as well. So let's hold that flat as we can. Just trying to get those high marks down. Make sure you don't over tighten it, you, you will break it if you go too tight. Just needs to be firm. And I'm just going to spin it in reverse. I've got this fairly coarse one that we're going to start off with and then finish it off with the finer one. And I've got this nice flat bit of um, tool steel that I'm going to just, just go nice, nice and flat. I want it perfectly flat if I can, if I can get it that way. check for high marks again now that we've smoothened it off a bit and there actually are a few high marks there that have shown up so I'm just going to do that again with the stone and then we're going to just do what I've just done 
smoothen it up and then flip this gear over 180 degrees and do the other side because I can't get right into that edge there. Here we go, I've hit it on the stone again, just taking those uh, visibly high spots again off. Um, now we're going to just try and polish it up again and see what happens. That's looking pretty good. Now we're just going to put some lubricating grooves in there just so that actual gear is more lubricated and it has a cutting effect of any muck that's in there or a flushing, flushing effect. Now there is, I've just washed all that off um, before I put the, the grooves in it. You can actually see that pump gear is wriggling left and right. I don't know if you can see that. So it is pretty, pretty bloody worn. Um, it looks like it's been flipped over a couple of times. Um, so what we're going to do, um, because it's an old vehicle and these pumps are going to be very hard to find, we're just going to do the best we can with this pump. Okay, I've put the little slots in there. I don't know if you can see that. They're just a tiny little slot uh, with a, a tool grinder. And it's just got like a nice sharp edge on it. I'm going to deburr it. Just run a really fine stone over that just so there's no burrs there. And I've done that in four places. And I've also done it on where the thicker part is, if you can see that. If we did it over here, it would could potentially weaken the gear and it could break there. Now, if you don't have a pair of uh, micrometers or anything like that, you can just use feeler gauges. Um, we've got 15, that's in metric, so that's 0.15 uh, of a millimeter or six thou roughly. And I've measured it, so that, that is going in just tight. So the 15 or 0.15 which is 6 thou and we've got the 0.2 of a mil which is about 8 thou. So The sixth hour is going in, and we've got the point two of a mil, or eighth hour. We're actually bending it; it won't go in. So we know that um, the clearance area is probably about seven thou, six or seven thou, and that's the gear that we've um, repaired. Now if we get a, a new gear, like this one, we'll put that in there, measure up the same, 15 thou goes in quite easily, oh, 15, 0.15 of a mil goes easily, 6 thou, and 0.2 is also going in. So that actually tells us that the old gears are less or oh, more oversized than the new gear. So we're going to actually stick with the old original gears in this in this instance. So um, it looks like the actual housing's worn so um, we've cleaned it up uh, we're just going to 
make a note where we've put our little X just here I'll just put it in there for now and where's the other X just there so that's how it came out of the out of the transmission um, and if you have a look that's how worn it is in there on this side so we're just gonna it's actually pushing the lugs on the torque converter are pushing that way so it's going that way you can see the little wear mark on the on the tip there and then if we have a look up here on the actual gears it looks like the what the way that it was um, has less wear on it the other side seems seems a bit worn a bit more worn to me so I'm going to actually leave it as it was with the X's my little scribe marks facing up um, it just looks like whoever's flipped it over has flipped it over for a reason you can see also in there uh, it's a lot more worn where the torque converter was uh, before they flipped it over anyway just a matter now of putting that back together we're not going to put the, um, the, the new gears in um, these are in better nick Okay, so we've got the our little scribe marks up. A bit of the trolling jelly. I'm just going to smear it everywhere. Probably a little bit too much there, but Outside. Okay. Now we're going to put the, the drive gear. Way too much in it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of petroleum jelly on that O ring just so it slides in a little bit easier okay so there's the front pump ready to be bolted to the valve body so our next video is going to be the valve body so here we've got the valve body and now the pump actually bolts onto that so uh, you can see the the end cover there the splines for the uh, the stator shaft the one um, or the stator in the in the torque converter that sits on that so now we're just going to pull this apart and clean up all the valves replace the sealing rings um, replace the gaskets uh, go, th go through the valves make sure they're all nice and clean there's the valves there that one the springs actually popped off a little bit you can see that it was down here 
Don't think it matters too much. There we go. Just going to pull that apart, scrape all the gaskets off, and then we'll go to the next stage. Those inside bolts there, closer to the um, where the rings are, that they're for the pump. They actually bolt the pump uh, onto this. So you can see they're all the same length, so it doesn't matter um, which, which one goes where. It's always a good idea to just examine that, um, just to make sure if, if one's a bit shorter or longer, it can cause a bit of trouble if you put the wrong bolt in the wrong hole. The other bolts, three longer ones, obviously going the, where the housing's wider, and the three shorter ones just go in the other places, but they're all the same length as well, as you can see. Just going to remove that manual shaft. Select the shaft, or manual shaft, whatever you prefer to call it. Use off that thrust washer. Uh, just inspect that visually. It's not worn. It's been wearing quite nicely. Uh, that one's... 75 thou. So we could possibly put a, th a thicker one in if uh, the end floats not right. Yeah, I'm just going to tap this but not real hard uh, just to get that stator shaft off. There we go. Now we're just going to clean up all these gaskets, um, run them over with stone just to make sure those surfaces are nice flat. Also this surface that runs on the opposite side of that pump, we're going to just, um, just smoothen that up with a bit of a stone as well. So I'll just go ahead and do that. I'm not going to bore you with, with doing that. Uh, I've already done that in a previous section. There we have it, I've just scraped all the gaskets off, uh, blown it all out, just try and make sure there's no little bits of gasket or inside or stuck anywhere. Um, this part here I'm just going to polish it up by hand, uh, it's a little bit hard to uh, put in the lathe so you probably could. Um, make a little dolly here and put it in but because of the weight of it it would be quite dangerous anyway um, that's the valve body and the stator shaft and the end plate on the pump we're just gonna um, I've just ran a coarse stone over this side where the gasket goes it looks pretty flat actually um, this surface was a little bit raised in a few spots. Also what, I, what I'm going to do when I put the new gasket on um, I'm going to actually decide which side I want the gasket to sit on. Um, it's actually a good idea to just put a bit of oil on one side just so you can separate it easier if you need to. So I'll probably leave the gasket sitting on on this or maybe even smear the oil on there just so you can take it right off off the valve body. Um, it'll just be easier than scraping it every time. Now here's a diagram uh, of the valve body with all the valves in it. You can go through there and freeze, freeze the frame if you like. And there's another section of it. Um, it just shows from a different angle all the valves. A little bit hard to see the whole thing in one one picture. And if you just take note uh, which springs go where and what they're doing. And there's another shot of the valves uh, from our book. I'm 
we're just going to start with these sealing rings. You just basically put pressure on one side and just pop them off like that. Um, there's just a little little hook like that um, where they clip on to each other. And then applying pressure on the outside with your finger just so you don't break them. You just lift them off like that. And if you have a, examine that ring, on the inside, um, it's not worn at all. On the outside, there's a little step there. If, if you can't find these rings, um, or if you don't have them in the kit, or if you break your, um, the ones that you've got, what you can do, where that little step is there you can just file that down a little bit you have to be very careful or you're going to file right through it um, and that'll just allow the ring to open up a little bit more if it's worn and also remember to flip the ring was like this with the worn side out the other one um, because the pressure comes between those rings it pushes it out so it's going to wear on the outside um, just remember to flip that over as well um, this side hasn't got the step there, this side has, so if you, if you accidentally break them or decide you're going to reuse the old ones, um, that's what you can do. We're going to replace them, but like I mentioned earlier in another section, um, you always make sure you test your rings in the bore where they're um, running, so I'm going to test that in the, in the clutch drum. Uh, with the new ones. So I'm just going to whiz these off. Like so. Now I've got the, the ring kit. And that's where the rings sit in there. That drum. That'll be those two there. You can see there, they've got no step worn in them or anything. So we just put that in like that and just slowly push it into that bore. And you can see they're perfect. There's hardly any gap there. So that little part, the little part where it locks in is has got that much to wear out because it's up like this and then when it gets to that spot it means either the rings are worn um, or the the drums worn uh, usually the rings are designed to wear out uh, but um, yeah they, they sit in there and they spin together with this drum that's why they'll wear on one side wear a step uh, occasionally these rings will uh, spin for whatever reason and wear this drum out. So anyway that one's good. We'll try the other one as well. And that one's perfect as well. And just to compare that we'll, see, we'll just check to see how worn the old ones are. And there is a little bit of a gap there. So, definitely worth replacing. But like I mentioned, a um, little bit hard to see. But if you were going to reuse the old ones, you can just get a really small file and just file that little, the little stop there where that ring runs and that will open up. It'll allow it to wear a little bit longer. So, anyway rings the other way. So we know those rings are good. The ring on the input shaft, which is that one, actually runs inside on this. So it's a little bit hard to, to see it, but we are going to push it in there and just see uh, how, it, how it looks. So um, on the opposite side over here there's a step so you actually have to push it in through this way. So 
we'll just whiz off that. Remember to just apply pressure on the outside of it just so you can slide it off without breaking it. Um, the circular pliers will break it quite easily. And we're just going to take a note. You can see that it's it's pushing up that way. So there's pressure coming here and you can see that ring's actually worn over. It's pushing towards the torque converter. So if you were going to reuse this one you'd file that down a tiny little bit just so it's got more more to wear and you'd flip it over 180 degrees um, there is a tiny little step there not sure if you can see it on the camera there so we'll just test that that old one just see what it looks like in there and it's actually I could just push that in with my finger really, it's really loose. If you can see that, it's just gone in really loose in there. And that goes right down past those little ports. And I'm just going to try the new one in there. Yep, there's heaps, heaps more resistance on as you're pushing it down. It actually looks like that torn a little bit um, because the little lock part of that ring is isn't all the way open. It's it's up a little bit. So it is, it has actually worn into that, it's worn a slight groove. So what I'm actually going to do is just file that a little bit, just so there's more, more um, room for that ring to wear out. Here's a little file we use. And I'm just gonna just file that little bit down. Um, there's not much room there uh, so I'm just gonna very very gently try and keep it as square as I can and I'm just gonna file that down. There I've filed it a bit and you can actually see that the diameter now uh, when it's clipped on is a little bit if you can see that height it is a little bit more open so it'll just allow that ring to wear a little bit more and fill in that um, the worn bit in there eventually uh, this this whole valve body might need to be replaced put that new ring on there and just remember to support it on the outside. And then it's just a matter of pushing one side down and flick it, flicking it over that step. And there we go. That's quite wide. We can try it. Oh, wrong way. You can actually feel the resistance in there. Alright. It just blocks off those two ports there. Um, it's, it's like a little valve type setup. So you can swap that over. Um, it doesn't look like it's that worn anyway. But don't forget to put it back in there. That just sits in there like so. Just 
just make sure you support uh, put your thumb there otherwise that spring will fly out Be stuck in there a little bit. Sure, it's actually stuck in there because I haven't knocked the roll pin out enough. Just level with the housing there. Oh, it won't come out. I need to get our medium bent screwdriver. We'll just push it in there to so it is quite contaminated with the fine metal so it's probably stuck in there. But that one from our diagram is actually the converter torque converter pressure regulator valve. So now we're just gonna wash up that bore, clean it out. Get a rubber tube, uh, make sure it's shuttling nicely through there, and clean it up. We can put it back together. Just to take a note, if if it was worn, uh, which way it went in, uh, because the way that valve works, it's basically only going to wear like a section in the middle or three quarters of the way through. It doesn't look like it's actually worn, so that was lucky. Um, I like to just flip them around 180 degrees just so it's wearing on a new spot if possible. So I'm just going to find a, a rubber tube that fits into that and then just try it in the bore. I've thoroughly washed and blown out a few times. Uh, you've got to do it a few times because all that um, fine metal really gets caked on in there. Um, so it's just better to wash it out as best as you can. Also in the end of that valve that was probably an eighth of it was full of fine metal so good good idea to blow all that out and maybe even give it a bit of a scrape with a screwdriver if, if there's any yeah there's still still more in there. So I'll just give that another bit of a wash. Now I've just got this little bit of dowel that um, we use quite often. Um, I'm just going to put that in there, it just fits nicely in there. And we're just going to, there is a fair bit of resistance so I don't think that's going to fall down under its own weight. So we're just going to work it just dry like that for a little bit and then I'm going to wash it out with the clean solvent and blow it out again. Wash the whole thing out. It's probably still got a bit of that fine metal in there but that should work nice and freely just so yep that, that actually is feeling a lot better already but what I'm doing I'm actually putting pressure on one side other side left side top side just as I'm working it in like that just remember to keep rotating it um, and you always want to have a nice sharp edge there because uh, that has a, a flushing effect it, it sort of cuts all that rubbish out if it's if it's tapered um, that's when that fine metal can get embedded in there it has like a funneling funneling effect so you wouldn't want to pull the whole transmission out uh, for a sticky valve problem like what's what you'd have to do to get the, to this valve body. The other little valve body on the side there um, isn't such a problem but this one you have to make sure it's spot on. You can see that's just falling under its own weight. So I'm just going to wash all that, blow it all out and put this valve back together. Shuttles through, no problems. Now, I've just got this fairly large screwdriver, and I just push that spring in, and just tap that roll pin in, just enough 
for the spring to not be able to fall out on its own. Now I can just tap it in. Under that roll pin, there you go. We just try and level that spring up so it's just sitting in the middle of the roll pin. And we just knock that roll pin in just so it's it's not going to go anywhere because it's one of those um, split rollers. Uh, if ever you have to pull it out again, um, don't go over here. Um, so it's going to bite into wherever the surface is. They do uh, knock in pretty hard, so it might even hold it from bolting up properly. So that's probably about one mil from the end, and you can see the thickness of that bore, so you don't have to go all the way through. All right, getting a collection of tools there. And I'm going to go this one over here. So I'm just supporting it, supporting that spring with my thumb so it doesn't fly out. And we just lever this out. Which is easier said than done. There you go. And that just holds that spring in there. Just make sure it doesn't fly out and if it is going to fly out that you can find it again. And that that valve was actually sticking to the outside there but it doesn't shuttle that far anyway but it's still a good idea for it to be nice and free. And there's nothing else in there. And that's the outside one. And that one will be the throttle downshift cushion valve. So same as before, I'm just going to clean out the bore, wash it out, blow it out a few times, wash it out, blow it out, try and get any loose bits out of there, wash the valve spring up. Then I'm going to find an, a little rubber tube. Um, I like to, if, you, if you're able to, to put the valve in backwards as you're working it through and then work it through the proper way. Um, these have got beautiful sharp edges on them so they're not going to, I don't think this one's going to get stuck anytime soon anyway. Anyway I'll go ahead and do that. Okay this valve I've found a little bit of rubber tube. Just make sure that the tube where on the end of it is actually lower than the height of the valve otherwise you're just going to scrape all that plastic and rubber inside that bore. If um, if it fits nicely like this and it is a bit high you can just go on the grinder and just grind it down a little bit just slowly work it down. I'm actually going to do that a little bit because it is pretty close to the, the size of it there. It is a little bit lower down but because of the imperfection of when they make these tubes one side might be touching a bit so I'm just going to grind a little bit there, um, just so it's definitely lower than the valve. There we have it, I've ground it down a little bit. Put the valve in on backwards. And that's going through nicely there, not a problem. And now I'm just going to flip it over and put it in the other way. And there's not a problem there. So that valve's ready to be put back together. Just going to wash again, wash and blow it out, wash this in the clean solvent and we can put it back together. Okay. Now we're just going to put it back in the way it was. The spring. And we've just got a while pushing it down, put that little retainer back in. 
There you go. Alright. On to the last valve. Just have to work it out a little bit. And that spring's a lot stronger on that one. Remembering the springs on the outside. And that valve is the forced forced downshift cushion valve. And it, there is a little bit of resistance coming out. Nothing else in there. And again, flush it out, blow it out, wash it out, blow it out a couple of times. Um, clean it all up and we're going to do exactly what we did with the other two valves. There we have it. The whole body's ready to be put back together. Okay, we're ready to start putting this together. Now I've got the gasket in place there, and I've actually noticed that the gasket holes don't really line up. It just looks like the gasket's too big. So what actually happens is these gaskets absorb a bit of moisture, and they expand. So one way to fix this problem is to actually, if you've got a microwave oven, put it in the microwave for about a minute, well, depending on what, how, what heat settings you have on, on your microwave, but that will actually shrink it a little bit and then those, all those holes uh, will line up a lot better. There we go, hot out of the oven. Oh, wrong one. There you go. Those holes are lining up a lot better now. Might even need a tiny little bit more, but it looks good. All these holes are lined up. Excellent. Now yeah, we've got a bit of a problem. We don't have a separator plate on these. But if, as you can see, those gaskets, um, it's not sealing up everywhere. So what we do is we inspect the hole. If you have a look at this one here, we lift it out of the way, there's actually a port that joins those underneath anyway. So it means that that gasket doesn't matter there. It can be open. Over here as well. That's actually just nothing there, so it doesn't matter. Uh, where else? Over here. That one there. There's actually nothing, nothing in there as well, so that one's not critical. Uh, where else have we done, done that one? Done that one, done that one, that's it, everything else seems okay. It's a little bit tricky because these, val these uh, transmissions have quite a few different um, versions so you've got to make sure that the gasket's correct. Even though it's been sent in the the kit that's apparently uh, definitely for this one um, you still have to check these things just to make double sure okay ready to put back together put that on put out that's where the input shaft goes through that big hole there You've got your little guide pins. And we just 
try and line up everything as best we can before we put the weight of the And we had the uh, six bolts, the three longer ones. These are the ones on the outside of, of it. The inside ones were off the pump. So we're just going to put these in. I'm going to put them all in just lightly. Uh, where does that one go in here? No. Just going to torque them all down by hand it actually says three and a half to five foot pound uh, because it's a new gasket we're going to do it down to five foot pound whatever that is in inch pound because my tension wrench Uh, I've got to go and do a conversion, what uh, foot pound is in inch pound. And it's 42 to 60 inch pound. So we're going to do it up to 60 inch pound. Okay, we're just going to put that little selector rod in. There we go. Thrust washer. Ceiling rings. There we go. Actually, we should, probably should have put the pump on before we put that. But we can just cock it to one side and then we can get access to that bolt head. Okay, so now we can put the pump body back on. Okay, we're just going to put the pump back in. We're just going to smear a bit of Vaseline or petroleum jelly around there just so the O-ring slides in a little bit better and put the bolts in. And that just snugly fits in there. Just align those holes up. Now we can put the pump back in.